Hello, you guys. Hello. Welcome to Warcraft 3 Guide. This is basic, super basic Warcraft 3 information. Super basic. So if you don't know how to play Warcraft 3, guys, here you go. Here's, here's an idea of how you can play. What we're going to do is we're going to go for a altar. We're going to go barracks first, burrow second, altar third. Super simple. What we're going to do this game is we're going to make a hero and we're going to make grunts with it. That can go ahead and uh, creep. If your build order looks like shit, if your build order looks great, that's wonderful. Either way, it's fine. All you got to do, if I would say if you're going to go for a grunt style, I would recommend probably going for a barracks first into a altar second. Just so you can get an early grunt out with an early hero out and you can you know start progressing that way. Um, a hero that would be nice and easy to learn with, that's just fine, is... There's a lot of heroes you can choose from, but this game will just go Farseer. Farseer is super standard. Super duper 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 standard. So that's what we'll do. We'll actually stop making workers at 12 supply for a second. So we have, right now we have three on the wood. And we have five, or we have rather four on the wood, because one of them was building a building. And we have five on the gold mine. Always go for five on the gold mine. But we're going to make a second burrow really fast. And this is just to make a second grunt because they cost three supply. So we don't supply block. And we'll make more peons after this burrow is done. Basically, the point I'm trying to make here is, is this is just, a, this is not the most economical build. It's not the most economical build. This is not a really great, I'm going to rush my tech build. It's a build that's going to teach you how to creep and how to do it relatively fast. We can also make a shop with our next bit of wood and I can finally follow along thank you yeah yeah and now oh the whole point is the whole the whole point of this game of Warcraft 3 is if you don't know what you're doing it's about having somewhat of a build that'll get you going doesn't have to be perfect get somewhat of a build that'll get you going the, the better the build the better obviously it's not, there's no negative there but basically having uh, a fast hero that is going to be crept up early. Like, leveling your hero is how you play this game efficiently. So that's ideally what we're going for. So we are going to go for Spirit Wolves this game, which is the summon ability of the Farseer. I'm going to focus fire the healer and then kill the, the units that hit harder but are weaker to grunts and the wolves. So we can get rid of the DPS of the creep camp faster. We're going to keep making grunts. Honestly, until about until about right now. We have about four grunts. A fourth grunt's on its way right now. I would say that's plenty. We don't need to go crazy on the grunts. Just make like four and you're fine. And that's enough to really like get your get yourself really moving with creeping. Now, if we wanted to, we could go back to the base, grab an item from the shop, like some salves to heal my units with. Or otherwise, if you don't, you know, if you have a map like this where there's healing wells and shit, you're going to abuse that. You don't necessarily have to do that. So we have four grunts for us here, and we're just kind of cruising with creeping. Again, the whole point is creep, 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 creep. I don't give a shit about scouting. I don't give a shit about, you know, anything really. Fuck it. I'm just creeping. Because if we're new to Warcraft 3, this is what you need to focus on. Don't let your units sit around doing nothing with their thumb up their ass. You need to level your hero. This is, this is ideally, this is like how to play efficiently in this game. Now the way I'm micering is with melee units in this game, they're a bit clunky. So it's not always ideal to just focus fire one unit at a time, otherwise your units might get really stupid and derpy. So what you can do is you can kind of start trying to like green box, like 50% of your units, 50% of your units, like put them on targets so they don't all get like path blocking each other basically. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep progressing here. So we, same thing again, we can put some of these units on the level three boy and some of them on the level one, whatever. Pick up the items with your forest here. Drop a new set of wolves. We're about to be level 2, so we're going to get the wolves again in a second. We're also not using chain lightning because it's very mana expensive, and we want to conserve mana while creeping because it keeps consistency going. Okay. And uh, tier 2 is almost done. We're going all the way to 50 supply. We can make like another grunt now that we have a little bit more open supply. 
And uh, we'll, we'll make grunts all the way to like six grunts and we'll stop. That Six grunts will be, that's it. No more. Okay. Now let's go in the center. Let's go ahead and go in the center. Let's drop a new set of wolves. These are stronger than level one wolves. Let's go ahead and grab my grunts and have them focus fire something. And then have my wolves and my first here focus fire something else. Grab the grunt that's getting focus fired and like run him around so he just stops taking all the damage. Focus fire that last range one in the back because it's the weakest armor type. Medium damage is really strong against the medium armor. Uh, so you want to kind of try to kill those units first if you can. It makes your life a little easier. And now that all the, and also they add a lot of damage because they're range. Uh, in this creep camp specifically. But now they're all dead so we're good to go. We're, we're fine on that. We're going to make one final grunt. And now that we're at the next tier of tier 2. We're going to add in a little bit more workers into our build here, so we can make, uh, we can make, uh, you know, more wood that way. Another thing you can do too with the first here, is if you have, if you do have a second where you're like, alright, I'm going to take a, take a sec here where, before I continue to creep. You can send your wolves to go scout bases on the map to like, try and, you know, find where your opponent is. So, first here is really good at having the ability to scout while you don't have to actually send your whole army over somewhere. We added on a couple peons at tier 2 to, to give us to a point where we have like about like 8 workers on wood. We have about 8 workers on wood. One of them is being in a building right now, but the rest are all mining wood, which is great. We can keep creeping. Our, far, our, not our first here. Our Torn Chieftain can come down here and grab that item that just dropped. It's whatever, it's fine. And we can keep creeping a little bit more because, again, we're not done creeping. That's what you want to be doing. We're, what we're doing is we're teching. We're setting up for like a big fat build for later. We're not going to go for like a timing attack. Timing attack is exactly how you kind of fuck yourself over if you don't really know what you're doing. Bring my Farseer over here. Or my Torn Chieftain over here. So we scouted the map. We know where our opponent is. He's middle right because we just got a bottom middle. We scouted middle left. There was nothing there. So we know our opponent's middle right. That's fine. And we just, we'll just keep creeping. Literally, like... There's a common denominator here, which is literally creep every fucking time. Every time you have a second to do anything, you just creep. Choose to creep. Oh, I'll just creep again. And I'll creep some more. And I'll go ahead and creep again. And you know what? When, that, when I'm done with that, I'll just creep again. And when I'm done creeping that, I'll creep again. Just keep creeping. Grab some grunts and send them over here to attack. Our grunts are all looking pretty good on the bottom middle of the screen. None of them are dying. Good shit. Now, we have Tier 2 Spirit Lodge and Torrent Totem is the ad buildings we added on. We also added on a War Mill. We're going to pick up that Intelligence Tome of my Farce here. We're going to take a quick pass by the Healing Well really fast, and we're going to go creep the other Red Dot. Just because Red Dots would be easy to creep now since we have a really strong army. We can get the Grunt HP buff. Get uh, fortified defenses for my, my base so my buildings don't get owned so fucking hard. Just start investing in upgrades, basically. Like, this is that moment where our gold is going to start going up. We're going to start going way up in gold. Because we're just doing all these upgrades. And then eventually we're going to explode from 50 supply all the way to 80 supply. So as soon as this is done, we're going to make one more peon. We're going to make a blade master. We're going to make one witch doctor. And then that witch doctor is going to take us all the way to 50 supply. This Witch Doctor is going to allow us also to have healing totems and shit early, so... Explode, baby. Oh, the Rosewood. Thank you, man. We could have, like, healing totems and shit like that to use for later. We can go ahead and attack the creep camp, pull it out. It's a good idea to... If you have, like, a melee camp in, like, a really tight spot, you might as well, like, attack it with one range in it, drag it out, and then engage it like this. Like, just... You know? You get a bunch of free damage while it tries to run away from you. You run my Torn Chieftain in the center and, like, War Stomp it. Why not? Stun it. But I just did a fuckload of damage to that creep camp. And, you know, much easier to creep it that way. Grab this grunt because he's getting owned. He's still getting owned. Put that strength tome on the Torrent Chieftain. You can check our base really fast. Get the Witch Doctor upgrade really fast for level 2. Get the Torrent upgrade really fast. And we can pick up these claws. Holy god. My Blade Master is going to have a lot of claws. Uh... 
Anyhow, basically what the build is, guys, what the build is, is we're going to be going for Grunt Opener into Witch Doctors into Torrents. Now, this build is super fucking easy for just learning the game in every form of the game if you're learning the game. I know a lot of people are going to lose their shit and be like, what the fuck? This doesn't work against Grubby. I know it doesn't work against Grubby. I never said it would. It's fucking learning the game. We're learning the game right now. So this build is good for all types of play. 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, whatever, free for all. It's a build that teaches you how to have early game creeping and then have late game transitions for orc for the melee style. So now that we have our upgrades are kind of all finished, we have level two casters. We have torrents with the pulverize. We are now going to make three more burrows and we're going to go into uh, we're going to go into, uh, you know, 80 supply at this point. We're also going to grab our items really fast. We're going to put all our claws of weapon, a claws of attack onto our blade master because this guy is going to be a fucking beast. Let's give our mana pot to our Farseer and maybe give our circlets to our Torrin. So our Torrin has more HP overall, a little bit more mana, whatever, because of the circlets. And he's got the ring of protection because he's going to be our tank. This is like our assassin who is going to just beat fucking ass with all these claws. And then the Farseer is just kind of the excess. We just put whatever else is on the Farseer. He's a nice opening hero to creep with, but he's not like any one of our, he's not like our powerhouse. He's like a good support hero, essentially. So he doesn't need the items. Now again, what are we going to do? We're going to go creep. We're not ready to attack yet because we're not at 80 supply yet. We're not actually at max power that we're looking for. So we're going to continue to creep. The order of how we're going to level up our, our, our skills is going to be we got Aura first on the Torn Chieftain, but now it's going to be Stomp, Stomp, Aura, Stomp. So we got Aura first to buff everything in it because level 1 War Stomp is kind of shit. It's not the greatest. Uh, but ideally, we're going to have the Torn Chieftain having level 3 War Stomp, level 2 Aura. The Farseer is going to be literally Wolf, Chain Lightning, Wolf, Chain Lightning, Wolf. And then so it'll be level 3 Wolf, level 2 Chain Lightning, and level 5. And then lastly, the, uh, the Blade Master is going to be uh, Windwalk first, crit, and then go crit again. Windwalk crit. So Windwalk first in case he gets focus fired, he's not going to die. Level 1 crit's kind of useless. Again, it's not that big of a deal. But if you go Windwalk, crit, crit, Windwalk, crit, it'll take you to level 3 crit. Level two wind walk and level three crit is insanely good, especially if you have fucking claws like that. It's insane. Now, one thing I did too is I put all my buildings in my same control group, which is I have it on four. What you do it on whatever you want, but mine is on four right now. And I I hit four, and I right click my farce here. So all my rally points for all my buildings just go right to my farce here. So all my new units like this, they just come over here, just like that. Easy peasy, nice and easy. Now we grab the Root Bracers for the, the Torn Chieftain. We're going to go ahead and grab a Tome of Agility for the Blade Master. This buffs his damage. The Root Bracers buff your tank ability. So our TC is like super fucking tanky. Our Blade Master is quite strong at damage. And our Farseer also just at level 5. So let's not use our Farseer anymore in the fight and just let him... <laughs> just let him like cast Wolves and run away so I can level up my TC and my, uh, my Blade Master. So when I attack now, I'm just going to go like this. Fars here, stop. Like, stand over here. Just sit like right there. Fuck it. I'm creeping again, so I'm going to drop a healing ward with my with my witch doctor. Drop one healing ward in the center of the fight. The creeps do not kill it. And at this point, when your army's this strong, we don't have to worry about focus firing anymore. Like, who fucking cares? Our army is super powerful now, so uh, whatever. Okay, let's do the same thing again. 1A move, 2A move. I have uh, all my army, heroes, and melee units on one. And then two is like my uh, my witch doctors. And now we're gonna keep making torrents. We're gonna keep making witch doctors. Keep getting upgrades. Keep getting like uh, shield and weapon for the torrent and grunt to upgrade them. Go ahead and upgrade this or drop a healing word again there. And now let's go ahead and uh, grab the let's grab the let's gra let's actually toss over the extra item which is the healing words to my first here. Give the Tome to my first here. Give the Ring of Regeneration to my TC. It makes him even better at tanking. This TC is a super fucking tank right now. He is so ridiculously strong. Okay. And now finally let's get like one more Witch Doctor. We'll go to like a total of like five Witch Doctors. It's fine. And now we'll make like one more Torin. And now we're, we're still creeping. We're still... Because you know why? Because all of our heroes are not level five. And we're learning how to play this game and be efficient with time, right? 
So we're going to creep another camp. And we'll run our first here away. Go ahead and start it up. Drop a healing ward just so we can stay full health. Now, if we get to a point where we're really high supply, we're like 80 supply and we still have money, why don't you go ahead and like just throw down an expansion somewhere? And also throw down this building right here. And what's going to happen now is you, we're now going to we're now going to have if, if you can't in the game yet, if it's just not over yet, we have the ability to rotate into something stronger. It's another claw for the blade master. Oh my fucking god. We'll give that manual. Let's actually give the manual health to the blade master so he's not so squishy. It just gives 50 hit points. That's all. Let's go ahead and attack another creep camp. Grab some wolves. And uh, grab some more torrents. At this point now, too, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, so these are already dead. So now we're kind of running out of shit to kill because everything's kind of dead here. What we can do now, if you start running out of control group space, here's a great way you can alter this build. Grab your grunts and either put them in group 3 or add them into group 2, in my opinion. Either one. I'll, I'll put them in group 3 because fuck it. I'll just put them by themselves. And I'll take them out of group 1. You can shift click them in and out, whatever. The reason why I'm going to do this is because Torin are now becoming too big a number and they're definitely better than grunts i don't want grunts to be the priority here grunts are just if they die i'm never going to replace them they just haven't died yet so i still have them now i'm going to go to my base here i'm going to upgrade something called war drums for the kodo beast i'm going to start upgrading shaman upgrades and i still have my torrent totem which is fine i can also like if i want to i can start upgrading torrent casters and keep upgrading your war mill for upgrades for like one one two two three three this build can turn into a full-fledged fucking melee build that is going to have the ability to have torrents with your heroes, shamans, witch doctors, and also torrent casters if it gets to that end-end-end game point if we really want to get that far. Torrent casters is like the last addition, though. So now what we're doing is we're going 1 A-move, 2 A-move, 3 A-move. 1 A-move, 2 A-move, 3 A-move. Grab my witch doctors, go healing ward, stasis ward. Now, cast abilities. Cast my wolves. Cast Chain Lightning. Well, he's running away, so it can't do it. Okay. We can cast Wind Walk, and we can, if he's like running away, you can chase it down and just stab it with your Blade Master. One A move, two A move, three A move. Blade Master's getting Focus Fired. We can Wind Walk him again. We can go ahead and Chain Lightning some shit. We can hit some shit with the Blade Master. And our opponent looks like they're full on retreating, so. We don't have to chase them all the way to their base. Just back off. One right click, two right click, three right click. You don't have to do it super fast. Don't panic. If you panic in this game, you micro like shit. And we can uh, we can just back off. Now let's just take like well if he comes back out, we can fight him again. We can chain lightning, war stomp. Looks like he's backing off again. So we'll one right click, two right click, three right click. We're just chilling. And now we can do, go to a point where we have Shaman level 2 upgrade being started. We have Torin Caster level 2 upgraded being started. And we have 3-3 three, three almost done. There's one item that's super good on the Blade Master. What we're going to do with this is we can go ahead and Wind Walk. And we can send it on up. And we can grab one final item to make this Blade Master a fucking absolute badass. Which is going to be something called a Orb of Lightning. If, you, uh, if you're kind of low on items on your Blade Master and you don't have claws like this. Oops, I did not mean to buy that. If you don't have items like this on your Blade Master where it's like claw, 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 claw. Let's say you have like one claw. Because anything that gives weapon damage is great on the Blade Master. If you kind of have low items, another item that would be good to buy artificially would be to go to an item shop like this and buy Boots of Speed. That'd be fine too. That would help a lot. At making him just faster at getting on top of shit. But once you get Bloodlust, he's, and you also have Endurance Aura, he's pretty fucking fast either way. So now, what we can do if the game hasn't ended yet, and we're like, our army is good. Let's say we have a decent amount of bank still. You don't have to do this. Well, he's fighting us, so we'll fight him really fast. But 1A move, 2A move, 3A move. Co control my, my casters, throw down some wards. Go back to my heroes. We can throw down a War Stomp. We can throw down a Wind Walk. We can run past him and attack him. We can make wolves. We can one walk again because he's running away and he's almost dead. Just run through him and attack his ass. Okay, we just killed his hero. We can back off for a second. I just want to show you a transition. 
Okay, he's attacking us again, so we'll attack him. Two, make wards. Okay, he's running away, so stop chasing. This computer is fucking... <laughs> And every time I turn around, it turns around. It, it chases me, but every time I chase him, it runs away. It's uh, it's special. Okay. So what I want to show you is this is not the full power of this army. There will come a time when your grunts will die. So we're gonna go ahead and just say, you know, what if these grunts died? We'll go ahead and kill them ourselves. I don't always recommend that you have to do this. You could just literally use them until they do die. But if they did die. This army would get a lot stronger, and the way that would go would be now we could add on shamans, we could add on a Tauren caster, and we could add on a Kota beast. And you don't want to go to 90 supply, do, or 81 plus, you don't want to get in that range. Do not get in that range. So uh, we do want to, you know, not be in there. Because what happens if you go above... 80 supply is you start having this high upkeep, which means your income is really, really, really shitty. Now what we can do too is we can add on some more peons to, uh, you know, mine our gold with that we ex from what we expanded earlier. I would also say it's not a bad idea to maybe throw down like a burrow here, and maybe have like another peon make like a tower, just just so your base is like somewhat safe for your because your expansion is super exposed otherwise. There you go. Another gold mine we have just collapsed, so we can do the same fucking thing here. We can just be like, let's make uh, a base and a tower. There we go. And we can make a tower. We just made the buildings. We shift right clicked our peons into the gold mine, so they'll they won't just stand there after we build it. They'll always make sure they'll make sure they start mining the gold. Uh, and now the way we can kind of control group this is we can make our torrent caster go with our. Uh, we can make our Torrent Caster go with our Shaman and Torrent Caster go with our all of our casters can go in two basically. Two all casters. And one can be everything else. So one A move, two A move. And we can keep making Shaman at this point. Just make more. We just need one Kodo. That's fine. We just want him for the aura he brings, which is War Drums. It just adds auto attack damage to my army, which is fucking huge. This Blade Master has a fat, massive C. This massive cack. Uh, and yeah, that, you know, we're expanding over here too. That's fine. And we're, we're, our shamans are coming. And this right here, I would say, is like the ultimate, like, in game army that you're going to have for a melee style. You have extremely high, powerful anti ground. You have, uh, you know, a good hero selection here. You have Forest here, Torn Chieftain, Blade Master, which can do chain landing, war stomp on shit. Your blade master can assassinate things with windwalk, but you have good control through your wards with your with your uh, with your witch doctors. And I would say the easiest way to micro this army is don't micro any of your spellcasters except for your witch doctors during a fight. So we go two, run back one, a move. Let's make wolves. Let's go chain lightning and war stomp. Let's windwalk our hero and hit his hero with it or something. And now let's grab our sh our group two and go cast a ward, cast a ward, cast a ward. And I'll explain how I did that in a second again. We could go 1A move, 2A move. Again, we could go Chain Lightning. Uh, War Stomp if my TC was in, in the radius of it. But he's getting kind of path blocked like fucking crazy right now. So he's not really in radius. But like now he is, so he can War Stomp some shit. Whatever. So the way this goes, just to break this down in a way that's not confusing. Because it might look like it's like, oh god, that's so many units, it's fucking confusing to micro this. What do you actually do here? This looks overwhelming. It's really not, because what happens is, is your Torn casters, the way you micro these, is it's pre and post fight micro. Do not worry about microing your Torn casters during the fight at all. Uh, the only time you would ever micro your Torn caster during the fight is to reapply things that get dispelled or to dispel your opponent's stuff. If there is something you really, really need to dispel, if you see something out of your opponent's army that's just like, I need to fucking dispel that, what you can do is you can hit two, hit tab twice, go tab tab. And go dispel the hockey for it is D for disenchant. Hit D, click the ground, and you just dispelled some shit on the ground. You can dispel summons this way. You can dispel your opponent's wards this way. Anything that's like a summon ability can be dispelled by a dispel. So that's the only time you would ever use Torn Caster during the fight. It's rare if you're learning the game that you're ever really going to need to do this. It's not priority. Another thing you can do 
with Torrent Caster before the fight starts is you can just go to your Torrent Caster when you're just chilling and nothing's really happening. You can be like this. Hey, Torrent Caster, I'm going to go ahead and hit your Spirit Link ability and go Spirit Link click, Spirit Link click, Spirit Link click. What you want to do is you want to Spirit Link all of your heroes and all of your Torrent and your Kota Beast if you can. You don't necessarily need to Spirit Link your casters realistically. But if you have a lot of torn cast, if you have like two or three torn casters and you want to spirit link your casters as well, that's fine. What it does is it adds a buff to your army called Spirit Link that makes your army divide the damage between multiple targets instead of just one target taking damage. So if I have three three torrents that are spirit linked, and I hit these torrents for uh, thirty damage, it's not going to do thirty damage to the target I hit. It's going to take the target I hit for thirty damage, and it's going to divide that by the spirit link, and it's going to go ten, ten, ten. So it actually makes your army last a lot longer. And what does that do? It makes something like Healing Ward a lot more effective because this heals everything all at once. It heals for 2% of your army's hit points every second. So that's a fuckload of healing going constantly the whole time. And it has no limit on how many units it can affect. So Spirit Link plus Healing Ward is an amazing combination. It's super effective. The, uh, the only other thing you... So that's uh, that's pre-fight micro. Spirit Link is pre-fight micro. Don't worry about casting that during the fight. You have more important shit to micro during the fight. Now the other thing Torrent Caster can do after the fight's over is you can actually resurrect your Torrent when the fight is over. And you can see if one of your Torrent die. Like that. What you can do when the fight's over is you can use something called Ancestral Spirit. You cast it. And it fucking reses your torrent. So you get your torrent right back. And this cooldown is not that long. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and fight him again. Go ahead and go. Ca casters, ward, ward, ward. Let's windwalk my blade master. Chain lightning, war stomp. Blade master can jump on the farce here, whatever. Windwalk him again so he doesn't die. Ch uh, ha attack the farce here again, whatever. So. I'll, I'll break down how I just microed again. I, I want to make this sound not confusing. It's, it's really basic if you know how to do sequential micro, like what's important. So Torrent Caster, like I said before, is all pre-fight and post-fight micro. The only time you ever micro the Torrent Caster during a fight is if you want to dispel something with Disenchant. That's the only time you ever do it. See how it says it does, it does 250 damage to summoned units? You can dispel summon units with it, and that's fine. You can also dispel buffs with it, like Bloodlust, for instance. If you're like, oh, this is a lot of Bloodlust, let's dispel that. You can ruin, you can delete your opponent's buffs off of his army. So that's all the turn caster does. The Shaman? Don't even micro the Shaman ever. Literally, this is super advanced if you want to micro the Shaman. Don't worry about it for beginning players. It's not worth it. But just to give you an idea of how you can micro a Shaman for advanced players... You could actually do something like, for instance, bl the Bloodlust is all automated. Just That'll just happen automatically. But if you have like a Torrent Chieftain with level 3 War Stomp and you do something yes. like make Lightning Shield out of a Shaman on top of the Torrent, you can run in the middle of a bunch of units. And if those units are surrounding you, chain line, or the, the Lightning Shield does quite a bit of damage over time. As you can see, all these units are getting kind of fucked up. And you can War Stomp them as well. And you can stun them on top of that and fuck them over really bad. Yes. You can also use Purge on them. And what Purge does is it it's what basically what Disenchant does, but it's single target. But Purge does a fuckload more damage than, than dis, the Disenchant does for a Torn Caster. Dis, Disenchant does 250. Purge does 400. So if you really want to use Shaman only to like focus fire down like a water elemental or like something summoned, you could do that. Okay, so we're going to micro this again. I'm going to go 1A move, 2A move, cast some wards, cast fucking Chain Lightning, cast Windwalk. Focus fire something squishy with my Blade Master. Focus fire that Torrent Chieftain. Okay, now, so I, I'm just trying to explain to you how to micro the army, right? So, so we kind of have the casters kind of down. The last thing about Shaman that would be good to do, if you want to really take it all the way to the next step to micro Shaman, is if your opponent is trying to run away, okay? If they're trying to run away. So let's just pretend my, my Torrent here, or my opponent's army, and he's trying to run away from me. He's literally running away from me. You can grab your shaman and go like this. Purge, purge. Okay, well, it actually doesn't snare you if it's your own units. Uh, it just dispels you. What purge does to your opponent is it It actually... No, oh, Melty Bubba, thank you very much for the three-year sub, man. Appreciate you. Making a video right now. I can't go too hard on sucking your dick. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate you.
but what this does, what Purge does, is it actually snares the unit. It like it like stuns the unit in place, and it like slowly starts walking again. So if you want to use Purge on your opponent as they're trying to run away, you can make your opponent be like constantly stopped over and over, and you can it's like basically snaring them in place so your you can your melee units can catch up and kill them. So purge is useful if you can catch them with purge and make them, you know, not be able to run away from you. That's totally fine. Also, Milky Bill, but don't worry about it. You're totally fine, man. I, I super appreciate the sub. I don't mind talking about it. I just, I don't want to go on it too long just because I don't want to detour too far from the video. But thank you very much for the sub, dude. I do appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, purge is good at, like, making your opponent not able to run away, essentially. Now, uh, another thing we could talk about is... Uh, so that's casters. That's all it is. So shaman... You kind of just let, sh just honestly, if you're not really advanced and really good at micro, just let Shaman A move and that's it. They cast Bloodlust. That's the best thing they do anyways. Good job. They're going to micro themselves. They Bloodlust everything automatically during a fight. Uh, Torrent Caster, do that as pre and post fight micro. Don't do that during a fight unless you want to dispel something. Good shit. You're good to go. The reason why I, dis I would say dispel for a Torrent Caster is better than a Shaman's dispel yes, is because a Shaman is single target. Yes. Whereas... A torn caster is radius, and look how big that fucking radius is. Like it's it's fucking huge. You can dispel like an entire army with like one dispel off of a torn caster. Like look at this. If I just start casting bloodlust on all my army here, like do you, are you seeing this shit? bitch. Look how look how big my like army is with all the blood that's going on right now. And one torn caster dispel could be like you know what. No. Boom. So it's it's fucking useful to dispel stuff. Thank you very much, Sassy, for the 18 months, man. Appreciate you, dog. Thank you, man. So it's... this The dispel's not bad. It's definitely useful, and it's much better than Purge at dispelling large groups of armies. So, yeah, that's why I'm saying kind of just don't even bother using the Shaman. It's, it's advanced. I already explained how to use the Shaman. If you get really good at it, you can use it that way. But for now, for learning the game, don't worry about it. The last thing, again, just to kind of break it down. I didn't really touch on this too much in depth. With a Witch Doctor, this is the one you actually will micro... Okay. Yes. Fucking Jesus. Blue, just fuck off! Let me just explain. So we're gonna Chain Lightning, we're gonna War Stomp, we're gonna cast Wards with our Witch Doctors. That's all we do. We're gonna Wind Walk our Blade Master again, get level 3 crit. We're gonna Wind Walk, Focus Fire, Chain Lightning, War Stomp, drop another Ward. He actually dropped the Ward on me too. Okay. So you can see that that turn right there is getting purged repeatedly, because the blade master has something called an orb of lightning, and that does the same thing as purge does. It like it's a chance to proc a purge. So now let me explain this really fast. With a with a witch doctor, the way you micro this, the way you micro witch doctors, is you grab them. You can occasionally drop what is the W ability, which is sentry ward. It gives you vision of the area, and you can do this whenever. You want vision of an area because it's literally massive how big it gives you vision. Like if I have it, if I want to reveal this, look at this. I'll walk over here. I'll drop a ward right here. I don't have to stand here. I can now walk away, and this ward will reveal the entire fucking screen. And it lasts for like six minutes or something, or like ten minutes. I don't remember how long it lasts, but it lasts a long time. So you can drop these per periodically throughout the map, and it makes it easy to like see where your opponents are going. Now, if I'm actually going to micro my, my Witch Doctors, the hotkeys that you want to use, uh, you, you can change them if you want to, but the default hotkeys are E and T. Now, these are important. You want to put E over your army. If your army is really, really, really concaved out really wide, you could go like this, E, E. If your army is like super wide, if your army is really close together, really dense, you can just drop one and that's fine. Just like right in the center of your army, that's fine. It really depends how wide of a concave you have. Uh... And the last thing, so that, that's all it is. Just have one, at least one ward healing your army. It does not stack. So don't be like three wards at once for healing wards. It does not stack. Uh, just make sure your units are covered though. So you don't have like a third of your army not even be affected by heals. That, you don't want that. Now another thing you can do. So you, you just, that's, that's a priority, right? Drop a healing ward just so you have the heal over time on your army throughout the fight. That's good. The other thing these do that's really fucking useful is this. It's called Stasis Ward. Or a stasis trap, rather. You drop it. And this thing has about like a five second or so activation. 
Uh, and when it finally activates, it goes into cloak, like right now, right there. When it's cloaked like that, if an enemy unit walks within the radius of it nearby, it will activate and it will stun everything in the bigger radius that you can see here. If you walk in the radius of the outside of it, it does not go off for the, how big the circle is. You have to walk in this, the closer radius to it, about that big. And if you walk near it as an enemy, I'll watch, I'll, I'll drop it over here because this AI keeps attacking me and I'll show you when he comes over here. If you drop it and it comes nearby, it sets off the stun. Now the way this stasis ward works is it has a it has a, a bit of a shorter duration of life than a sentry ward does. Uh, so it's not, it's not like going to last a long time. So you don't want to be throwing these down all over the map just like you don't want to be throwing healing wards down all over the map. Those are much shorter durations. You just use them during fights. What you want to do is though, you want to put this on top of his army. You want you want to cast your healing wards in your army and you want to cast stasis wards in his army. You want them to go off. They do not get focus fired by his army. He has to physically dispel them if he wants to or focus fire. Actually focus fire himself if he wants to focus fire it. If he just A moves, it will not be attacked and it will go off. Now, if you put multiple stasis wards within the circle radius of the first one. So see how there's a big red circle? If there's another stasis ward that is in the radius. And the way you can tell is look at look at the stasis ward I just dropped. Okay, watch. here. It'll, it'll go off. See how it stuns? Let me kill him again really fast and I'll tell you. One second. So chain lightning, war stomp, wind walk, spirit wolves, wind walk, attack, wind walk, attack. Like the blade master fucking wrecks. So once he gets high level, it's it's insane. It's fucking ridiculous. Now go back. Now with the stasis words, if you drop a stasis word within radius of another stasis word. When one of them goes off, it will delete the other one. Just so you guys know. So if I have a stasis... No, look at the stasis word right here, okay? Look at this one right here. This is the one I want you to look at. If I drop a stasis word right there, notice how it doesn't highlight the other stasis word. But if I were to move it over a little bit... Like right there. Notice how it turns green now? The fact that it's green means it's going to be affected by my first stasis word. So if I drop one right there... If this stasis word goes off, it will literally delete that stasis word. All it does is when one stasis ward goes off, every other stasis ward in the radius of that circle gets deleted. So you can't spam fucking stasis wards in one spot. So what you want to do is, is the second it goes off, you reapply a new one. The second it goes off, reapply a new one. The second it goes off, reapply a new one. You let it stun, and then you reapply a new one immediately and let that one go off and you reapply another one. And if you want to have really good spread over the army, you can throw down a stasis ward like this out of range of these because it's not in the same radius as those. So I can do stasis word, go off, stasis word, go off, stasis word, go off. And you want to time it. So it goes off, you apply a new one. It goes off, you apply a new one. Don't throw down stasis words like this where it's all stacked up because if, again, if one goes off, they all get deleted. So that's how you micro stasis words and, and healing words and witch doctors. It's periodically going, throw a healing word in my army, throw a stasis word in his army. You're done. Two a move, healing word in my army, stasis word in his army. That's it. That's all the micro it is. It's super fucking easy. The only hard part about it is, is mixing that into your rotation of micro that you do with everything else. Uh, and also, witch doctors don't take the priority. So when you do it, if you have like two control groups like I have here, like one is my main army, two is my stasis word, caster, bullshit, my, all my casters, it's going to be like this. Two, tab, healing ward, stasis word. One, control my units. Two, tab, healing ward, stasis word. You have to hit tab. Because tab is a subgroup. And the reason why I think it's good to put all your casters in the same group if you're learning the game is because it keeps them organized. You can keep them really organized and you never have a situation where like some of your casters are way the fuck over here, some are way down here, and you're like, whoops, I have four control groups or no control groups at all, and I forgot to grab my units. Oh, my bad. Like, that sucks. Don't do that. It's just easy to put them in the same control group. And I like, one, having all of your heroes and your Kodo and all of your Torrent. It's super, it makes it super easy, super easy to micro. It's organized. And that's, yeah, that's how you micro all of your casters throughout every fight. Now to break down the final bit of the heroes, the way you micro your heroes is spirit wolves are pre-fight micro. You always you pop these before the fight starts. And then you, you know, you have them in part of your army that you can attack move with them. Your, once the fight actually starts, what you can do is you, 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 
weave between three abilities. One ability per hero. It's Chain Lightning for the Farseer. It's War Stomp for the Torn Chieftain. And it's uh, Wind Walk for the Blade Master. So it's literally just, okay, I'm going to run my Torn Chieftain into the center of my opponent's army. Like this, I'm going to get him in there. And I'm going to War Stomp his ass. That's all you do. You just War Stomp in the center of his army. Like, here he comes. I'll, I'll just try to explain it how I go, okay? So, Spirit Wolves, before the fight starts. One, a click. Chain Lightning. War Stomp up in the center. And Wind Walk. Get on something that's juicy, like that I'm, that's currently dying that I want to kill. Let's Wind Walk again. Get on something else that's juicy. One A move, click over here. So we keep chasing it. Get on something juicy, Wind Walk. Cool, good shit. The reason why you cast Wind Walk way more often is because Wind Walk has a much shorter cooldown than your fucking War Stomp and your Chain Lightning. And then now, you know, obviously, like you could probably cast two Wind Walks and the time it would take you to cast one War Stomp. Like, let's actually test it. We'll cast War Stomp and Chain Lightning, or War Stomp and uh, Wind Walk at the same exact time. So you got War Stomp, Wind Walk. We'll hit something with it. Wind Walk again. Hit something with it. I'm still on cooldown. See what I mean? Like, it's it's a much longer... You, you could almost cast three Wind Walks in the time it would take you to cast a War Stomp. Now, I don't want you to just only be casting Wind Walk the whole time. If your Blade Master is in range to auto-attack shit, you should just let him do it. It's actually not better to Wind Walk if you're already on the target when you're a high level. Because, again, what did I do with the Blade Master? I prioritized his critical strike. So, if you're getting kited and they're running away from you, what Windwalk does is it gives you a fuckload of move speed. Now, watch this. Okay, just watch this. I'm going to show you an example. Look at what a Blade Master looks like when it has no buffs at all. Okay, watch. This is how fast the Blade Master runs when it's not affected by buffs at all. No Windwalk, no Bloodlust, no Torn Chieftain Aura. It's not that fast. It's kind of a fucking slow gas. He's pretty fucking slow. But now if I have all three of those things, which you always will in a, in a big fight, you'll always have Bloodlust, you will always have Torn Chief Denora, and you will always have Windwalk if you need to catch something. Look how fast he runs in a second here when I do that. So I'll Bloodlust him now. And now I will Windwalk. And now I will run near the Torn Chieftain. And he fucking cruises so much faster than he was before. He will easily run down other targets, no problem at all. He is, like, almost, like, twice as fast as he was before. It's insane. Like, he, he gains 40% uh, move speed from the Wind Walk at level 2. He actually gains 70% uh, at level 3, which is really fucking fast. He gains 30% move speed from a level 3 aura. He gains 20% from level 2 aura. So right now he has level 2 aura, and he has level 2 Wind Walk. So in total, that's 60%. And then Bloodlust gives him, I think, like, uh, like what is it? 40% or 25%. So he's got 65% move speed right now. Bonus. Because of all that shit. So it's, it's fucking nuts how much faster he is. It's just, it, you basically use his wind walk as a gap closer. And once you're on top of the target, you let his auto attacks hit the target. Because if you let the auto attacks hit the target, look how much fucking damage he does with good items like this. It's, it's a, this is kind of absurd. Just got to throw it out there. But check this out, okay? So look at his wind walk damage. Wind walk damage... I do 70 right there. It's only 70, but now look at his critical strikes when it procs. Watch a critical strike. It's going to be a lot more than 70 when it procs. When it procs. There you go. 392. His critical strikes hit hard as fucking hell. Super, super, super effective. Now, I'm kind of getting my ass kicked here, so we're going to back off and we're going to actually just win the game now to finish it off uh but you get the point you get the point at this point i feel like so do everything we just talked about we're gonna take another expansion uh we can take a tower at it too shift click the mineral line uh, or the gold mine rather we can make our wood our wood guys go mine more wood that's cool all g and if you ever get to a point too where you have a lot of bank and you can't actually either you don't you want to remake your units faster it would not be a bad idea to make a second Torrent Totem and a second Spirit Lodge. That way you can make Torrents at a faster pace and you can make Casters again at a faster pace. That's fine. You don't need to make a second Bestiary because you're only making one Kodo and you're going to stop anyways. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you one final example of I'm going to micro everything all at once like we just talked about. I want you to be able to see it in action, what it really looks like. 
Let's go ahead and heal my army in a second. And if you also have a lot of money too, you could you could as well just max out your supply. You could go all the way to 100, and that's fine. All right, and this is almost done. So we're gonna go. We're, if also, if your casters start dying, and you have all three of them, I would say a good a good balance to have would be four shaman, four witch doctor, two uh, torrent caster. So four of the spirit lodge casters and two of the torrent totem caster. Okay, it looks like we might be getting attacked in a second. So I'll, I'll try and explain this without making it sound crazy. And another thing we can do too is we can cast our uh, Blade Storm with our Blade Master. So one A move, two A move, cast Ward, cast Ward, Chain Lightning, War Stomp, Wind Walk, move over, hit something in the center, and let it fucking go to town. Drop an item out of my forest here. And we just fucking destroyed that fight. Drop another stun totem because the stun just went off. And we just decimated that fight like fucking hard. That was, that was very, like I would say that if you could do that, that is like good micro right there. Like if you could just use your abilities in rapid succession, that is what micro is in this game. So again, like I said, now we're going to just go ahead and finish off maxing out. We're just waiting for two more units to pop out and we're good to go. Fucking building, grab all of our peons, and shift, right click the gold mine. And we're almost we're just about ready. We're just about ready. Just just to make this like I just want to give you like a good example. Watch out. Get two torrent casters. And this is gonna be like full power of our army here. Like the the full power. So two torn casters are about to spawn. And then the last thing as well we can talk about is uh, if you ever have a situation where like, you know, your units are clumped up and shit like that, obviously you can mouse green box, mouse micro your shit and move them around. Just like click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move. Click, move. The better you get with the mouse, you know, obviously the better you'll be able to play. I can't really give you a tip on that. Just get better, get more comfortable with your mouse. Maybe turn your sensitivity up a little bit if it's really fucking slow. Alright, and now we have a really, really, really good army. Uh, we actually have five shaman and three torn caster. That's fine. I was I was saying four four two is great. We have five four three. Who gives a fuck? It's not that big of a deal. Now here's how we're gonna micro this. One A move, two A move. We're going to move over here. We're going to get ready to go attack his ass. 1A move, 2A move. 1A move, 2A move. We can drop a word on the way. 2 tab W click. 1A move, 2A move. 1A move, 2A move. 2 tab W click. Drop another word for sight. And now finally, we're maxed out. We're ready to take a big fat fucking fight. Let's go ahead and do this. 2 tab tab R hold shift. Click, 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 click. I am spirit linked out my ass. Now, one A move, two A move. One A move, two A move. Two tab W click. One A move, two A move. One A move, two A move. Two tab W click. One C click tab T click tab W click my blade master. Go hit something with squishy. Two, tab E, click, tab, or T, click. I just want to make sure my words are up. I want to make sure my torrent, my shit's up. And we're good to go. I, I don't want to lose my stun totems and shit like that. Let's windwalk my blade master so he doesn't die. One, chain lightning, two, storm, shockwave, or war stomp, whatever it's called. I'm literally just bouncing between three heroes of spell rotation. And I'm occasionally throwing down a healing ward and a stun ward. That's all I'm doing. Hey, blade master, go fucking annihilate that farce here.
That's all it is. And if you ever saw your opponent's army was like super stacked up, you could use your Blade Master's ultimate ability called Windwalk. This thing fucking wrecks armies like crazy. Uh, it's always, you can always use it. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole, the whole thing, the whole deal. So that's how ideally I would say you can micro in, in, in detail a very basic army of orc, which is, it starts off super basic with grunts and then it becomes this, which is a very well-rounded orc army. And if anything died throughout that fight, what would we do? We would go back to my Torrent casters and we would resurrect all the fucking Torrent that died, if any of them died, before I leave the battlefield. Easy peasy. This army is very fucking strong. And this, like I said before, you can play this style in 1v1. You can play it in team games with your friends. It's fucking just really strong and effective. The only thing I would say you might want to change about this build, if you play a really high team game, is maybe instead of going Farseer, Torn Chieftain, Blade Master, you could go for like Farseer, uh, Shadow Shaman, which is the other hero on the, on the Orc Altar, and then get a Torn Chieftain third. And the only reason why you would do that is because the Shadow Shaman has an ability called Healing Wave, and you, that, that's also another way to heal your units, which is fine. You don't have to do it. You could literally do this as well. This this is the better version, I would say. The Shadow Hunter... Sorry, I call him Shadow Shaman, my bad. Uh, the This is the better version, I would say. And the only reason why I would say that is because a uh, ultimately a Blade Master scales better He's honest. I would say he's probably the best scaling hero on Orc overall. He's fucking crazy how strong he gets at high level. Uh, Torn Chieftain is probably the only really contest for that. But the three best heroes overall for Orc, in my opinion, is actually just get rid of the Farce here and go Shadow Hunter. Farce here is actually not as good as a Shadow Hunter. So if you actually had Torn Chieftain, Shadow Hunter, Blade Master, those are the three best heroes overall. The only reason why I want you to go for a Farce here is because his Spirit Wolves, like I showed you early on in the game, they make creeping early on in the game super fucking easy. Super, super, super easy. It's, my, it's the easiest hero to creep with at the start of the game. Uh, for Orc, that is. So, if you want to learn the game, I, I highly recommend you learn how to play a Farseer first until you get comfortable with it. And if you start getting really, really comfortable with a Farseer, you can start rotating your build then into going either Blade Master first or going into Torn Chieftain first. And then doing the opposite, whatever you don't make, make that other one third. And always going Shadow Hunter second. If you get really comfortable with creeping with one of these two heroes to start the game off with, which is harder, that would be fine. It's just for now, Farseer makes creeping super easy. You're gonna feel you're gonna feel like your life is easy as fuck if you just go Farseer first. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about it. I hope it makes sense. I wish. Uh, also, last thing, last thing, last thing. If you guys want to know more generalized Warcraft three information, there was a lot of info with this video. But if you want more generalized information about Warcraft 3, go. I highly recommend going and watching my Undead Fiend video. Because for the Undead Fiend video, I did also put in a lot of generalized Warcraft 3 information in there. I didn't just talk about the army. I talked a lot. I talked about like how to manipulate creeps and stuff like that. And what hero stats mean. Like generalized Warcraft 3 info you should probably know. So thank you for watching. Go check out the other video. The other videos, if you want to learn more about the other races, and like I said, the Undead Feed video is going to be a lot of general information as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one, and good luck. Have fun playing the game. Go have fun with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.